Hey guys, so today I'm working in my patio area and I'm going to plant up all of the pots that you see behind me. And this space usually is the last one to be planted for the summer because I just didn't have the time. But uh, before I start planting, I just wanted to give you a little tour of the space in case you haven't seen it yet. All right, so this is our patio area and it's about 12 years old. Um, I built it myself. I built the patio and the pond uh, with some help from Michael and my dad. The patio is about 12 feet by 12 feet. And here is the pond right over here. I don't think that you can see the fish right now. Kind of hiding. There is um, a juga ground cover here. It's usually quite aggressive, but it can't go anywhere in this patio and it plays a role of uh, living mulch so the weeds don't grow in here. The furniture is over 30 years old. <laughs> I think I spray painted it like at least five times to limp it along and change the cushions. And also the fire pit needs to be spray painted. It definitely is a bit rusty. And what I did last year, I added all of these pots here in the corner because I wanted to have a feel of a living room in the outdoor space. Um, and I add a lot of my house plants in here. And what else I did, I installed drip irrigation that is right next to the fence. And then there's uh, drip tubes that are going up the drainage hole of each pot. And that's how these um, planters get watered because Otherwise, I will not have time for watering all of them. Anyway, so what I'm going to do today, look at that. <laughs> this is a seed of some sort, like probably a thistle about to plant itself. Um, anyway, what I'm going to do today is plant those pots. And also there's giant planters, planters right there. And I will show you how I fill them up with potting mix. Um, because they are so big and a lot of times the potting mix around here is quite expensive so I'll show you a trick of how to fill them up without spending a lot of money. All right so these are my really large containers that I use to plant the elephant ears in uh, because they do require a lot of space. However these containers need about three to five uh, bags, large bags of potting mix. And just for the reference, I'm about 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, and as you can see, these are uh, quite big. So what I have been doing to save on the uh, potting mix is I have been filling these containers halfway up with weeds and mulch and uh, the other half with potting mix. This way I do save uh, quite a bit on the po uh, potting mix. So um, I think there's a leaf in the way now. You can't see me. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just going to go on. Um, the uh, drip tubing is connected to the supply line and it's fed through the drainage hole here in this container. And then once it's all filled in, I'll just um, hook it up and that's how the plants are watered. So here's a bunch of weeds that I weeded the other day. They're a little dried up, which is perfect. And I'm just going to start dumping them in the pot. You can uh, kind of cut them up a little bit more to make them smaller, which will make them biodegrade faster. And, um, you know, some people call this process hugel culture, composting in place. Um, and, you know, I have been doing this for years, even before I knew any names for it. It kind of made sense. Some people fill uh, half of their containers to save the on potting soil with plastic pots. But I find this method better because you're actually making compost. You can use this uh, year from now in your beds, makes wonderful compost. So as for the mulch, I don't go heavy on it because it's slower to break down, but mulch does add a lot of drainage to your containers. So like literally half an inch layer. And then I have another layer of green matter, which is fever fuse that are out of season now. And I will break them down a little bit. Another question that people ask, but what about nitrogen? Wouldn't the soil uh, rob your plants 
of nitrogen as they're breaking down. Well, there are two, this, this layer is too deep for the roots to reach because the potting mix will be up to here. And in my experience, roots do not uh, reach that far. I should have had like a pruners or something. Yeah, let me get pruners, hold on. This will make it a lot easier. <laughs> Uh, so this container was full this spring and I just emptied it in uh, one of my garden beds. It made a beautiful compost, just super fluffy and dark. Um, you can use fresh cuttings of your shrubs as long as they're not too woody. You don't really want a lot of woody stuff in here because it just takes a lot longer to break down. You can use grass clippings, leaves, anything that you would put in the compost, you can put in here. And this works not just for the big pots, you know, for medium sized pots, it works as well. It doesn't work for uh, small pots that well because you do need all the potting mix in small pots that the plants can use because a lot of times they will fill in the entire pot if the pot is small. Okay, so as you can see, I kind of alternate the green matter with the mulch. So another recommendation that I have is to compact this as much as you can because as uh, this starts to break down, the soil actually settles a lot because this whole thing biodegrades and creates compost. And you guys know, um, you know, compost heaps get so much smaller. So definitely pack it up. You will still have a lot of settling, but probably next year. So you don't have to worry about that this year. All right, I'm gonna go get some more weeds. Now it's finally time to add potting mix. There you go. And this is how you fill a very large container with a potting mix. So all I have to do now is water this to make sure all of the air bubbles are gone from the potting mix and everything is nicely settled so I can start planting. Okay, you guys, I planted the pots just in time. It started raining and I'm going to give you a quick tour before it starts raining again, which I think it will. 
So the um, first pot here, which I really, really love how it turned out, has the Tic Tac white Calabracoa right here, a little purple middle. Um, Dichondra Silver Falls on the side. This is a Pseudoranthemum black varnish. Beautiful plant, these bold leaves. And this is a Centauri of some sort. I will put all of the names on the screen if I'll find them, I'll, if I'll find the labels. But I love the contrast between these two plants, the fine texture, the bolder texture, the darker foliage, the lighter foliage. So, so beautiful. This uh, coleus right here, um, I don't know the name of. Uh, my friend brought it for me. She just got it in one of the nurseries she visited. It's one of the trailing varieties. This is my mojito elephant ears with some dichondra and euphorbia. And a lot of the plants that you see here were either overwintered in the basement, like the elephant ears, or I left them out in these pots here for the winter, like the hydrangeas that you see. This pot, with this hydrangea has um, Glitz euphorbia, which is one of the bigger euphorbias that you can grow, and Dichondra silver falls, and this is Jurassic Rex begonia, which is one of my house plants. And as you can see, when I put it, put it out, it got scorched a little bit, but it will recover. So then there is this coffee cups elephant ears, which are so pretty, you guys. Look how they collect water in their leaves. It's not so nice. Uh, also overwintered in the basement. And then that hydrangea right there, it's not looking too hot because somebody, I'm not going to name names, <laughs> pruned it because they thought it was forsythia. And I understand for a novice, uh, forsythia and hydrangea look very much similar. But this hydrangea is not going to bloom this year. Um, the the uh, scavola that you see over there, the beautiful color scavola, is whirlwind uh, starlight scavola and this one is a compact white euphorbia with some dichondra silver falls and this uh, kind of like a lamb's ear looking plant this is balota which i've never grown before it's kind of cool looking um and these pots right here receive pretty much full sun and then as i go to my left it becomes like more part shade to shade. There's another hydrangea here with some double begonia underneath. This uh, elephant ear is also overwintered in the basement. That is heart of the jungle. And I love like the dark foliage, like almost purple foliage on this. And then these pots here with the elephant ears that I overwintered as bulbs. Uh, this is called Acacia esculenta boy they needed to be planted in pots they were like struggling they um they are under planted with torinia and torinia is one of those annuals that you can plant in part shade some dichondra silver falls and this is bossa nova begonia which i really love this is bossa nova pure white white sorry <laughs> uh, i really love like that is a cascading begonia and then this plant is right here is Kalancho or Kalankoe, however you say it. It's one of my house plants. I just um, added it to this composition because I really love this the leaf on this. Unfortunately, it got scorched as well. Like look at those yellow spots, but it will recover. It'll be fine. And then the last pot here, again, I have the elephant ears and this pink dot begonia, which is so cute because it's not even a blooming plant, but it provides so much color. And then I have the Terrania, again, Summer Wave Large Silver, that is the name, beautiful flowers, and then uh, Dichondra Silver Falls. And this is pretty much it for the pots. And uh, they're going to fill in. I think it's going to look so beautiful with little pops of color, little pops of um, silver and darker foliage. I'm going to show you again the planter that I had here already with some basil, 
some uh, fishnet stockings, uh, colliers, streptocarpus, shiny shoes, colliers, white bacopa, and scotch moss. So pretty. Alright you guys, this is it for this video. It is starting to rain. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.